when COVID hit, we go, man, this is going to be great. Everyone's going to run out and, and want to have immune support, right? Build up the immune system so it can function properly to fight off these virus and bacteria that were being introduced to. Um, when it came to it, uh, no one wanted to go out and buy it. They all bought toilet paper. That's my joke. No one went out and bought anything for vitamins to really build the immune support. And so we decided, hey, we know what's going on. Uh, we did stem cells for really for um, respiratory issues. Uh, we knew that uh, what was being sprayed in the environment, alcohol, all these other toxic cleaners were going to be harmful to the uh, lungs. Everybody, hello, welcome for welcome. Thank you very much for joining. I'm really so excited to have you guys on. As you join uh, today, like, comment, share. If you like what you're hearing, I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have questions for either Dan or Zach or myself, anything industrial hemp, um, I guess anything hemp from seed to soil, right? I'd love to hear to um, anything. <laughs> seed to what? Seed to shelf. That's right. Um, so I, well, and even beyond, you know, a lot of the topics we talk about are, you know, what, what happens after we make that hemp shirt and is it really sustainable or biodegradable and so forth. But welcome, Dan and Zach. I'm excited to hear from you guys. I want to know real quick, how did you guys meet? How are you guys connected? And how did you become partners? Well, that's a good, I'll let Zach give the story. Yeah. So <laughs> um, back in the day, I had a medical sales and marketing company and um you know, we, I introduced new products to the medical market. Uh, did a lot of genetic testing, a lot of uh, uh, new and innovative uh, medical equipment. And Dan, his background is in the integrated wellness space and his clinic that he runs, uh, doing stem cell treatments and other uh, innovative treatments that I would target his clinic. Go to his clinic all the time, try to get him to buy stuff he never would. Um, and then one day he, he pulled me aside and asked me if I would be interested in uh, selling CBD. And this was before you know, the CBD craze was really getting going and I'm just like, ah, nah, I'm, I'm not really interested. And then, uh, long story short, he, he talked me into it and we've just been going hundred miles per hour ever since. And so, um, with, with that, with our, our, our background, both in the medical space and, and, you know, me being in a space where we, the products and, and services that I were, that I was providing required a lot of clinical research and what Dan was doing, same thing. Uh, when we got in the, the hemp space, we wanted to do something that was also on that same thing where we wanted to clinically test the products that we're using for efficacy and, and, and that kind of stuff. So we're really, we geek out on new technologies and hemp. Um, so we like the wire soluble space because of bioavailability. And um, go ahead, I want you to give a little bit about your background. He, he, was, he was pretty tenacious. So uh, I was co-founder of a, a clinic and we did stem cell therapies that uh, uh, different type of procedures for uh, integrated health and wellness. But I've been training docs for about 15 years in, in that space on, on different procedures and different uh, type of um, machines, also in um, uh, all areas of health and wellness. But, uh, you know, back, back in the day when stem cells was coming out and they said it was really experimental, um, and now it's, it's widely accepted and now even wanting to be regulated by the FDA because it absolutely works. We knew it was efficacious and so we knew that it worked, but we did testing on those uh, type of products that were out there. And not all the products were the same by any means. So when you heard stem cells, people said it was in blood. They said it was in, in uh, that tissue. Yeah, well, yeah, different. It was in yeah. fat, it was in blood. It was, there's all different types, right? Perinatal products, afterbirth products. <clears throat> and so we did a lot of testing and found out uh, products that were really good and, and looked at things differently uh, and kind of dissected things up. What's good? What is What works? What doesn't? And then also what will regrow and, and what will, um, uh, well, long story short, we'll get into stem cells. But the same thing is happening with hemp. So when you get into hemp, what kind of hemp? How is it grown? What soil is it grown in, right? Uh, what microbes are we doing? Are we just throwing it in soil? It's a remediary plant. It's pulling up whatever's in the, in the soil back up into the plant. So we don't start out with something good. We don't end up with something good. And so same sort of thing. But our bodies, when we gave it what it needed naturally, stem cells, what we call, um, you know, MSCs, which are messenger cells. It tells the body what to do, and the body does its natural function. Right along with that same thing is what CBD or cannabinoids do, 
we, we, we mentioned CBD in particular, but in all the cannabinoids, they let the body go ahead and say, hey, you're not functioning right. And they're just a, a huge array of the communication. And it's all they're doing is just adjust that communication up or down by what's needed by the body. Same thing as what we're doing with stem cells. We're not doing anything more than giving the body what it needs naturally to do its natural function and the best your body could do for its natural genetics. And that's the way I look at CBD. So when I looked at that and uh, I was approached uh, by a group that was bringing CBD into, into Utah, and uh, some, some good heavy hitters, and they said, hey, we, we really want your background in the, in the medical space because doctors just don't really know. Uh, in fact, uh, Zach will tell you, we had some doctors that said, there's no such thing as an endocannabinoid system in the body. I know I've been to medical school. And so the idea is if we can help, because the general public knew a lot more about cannabinoids than did a lot of the doctors. So we wanted to go to that side and really start educating doctors so that we can really start using it as a good source uh, for the body for health and wellness. And that, that's how okay. all this does. Okay, so what does the education look like? Before we dive in, because I'm really excited to, to hear about like some of your products and some of the things that you guys have recently done and specifically around the SARS virus or COVID, right? Um, yeah. And so I'm, yeah. We, we get a little crazy. We, 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 We've tested a lot of different things. One of the things that we want to make sure, especially anything that I do or we do or my uh, our co-founder, uh, Darren uh, Lopez does, uh, you know, he's been in, uh, in in the health and wellness space, brought candy chews into GNC. And so there's a lot of things that, that we do. But if it's not efficacious, we don't want to do it. Um, and so we, we actually went out and we started doing PK tests, which is pharmacokinetic testing, to find out how much is really absorbed or is available in the body for uptake of CBD. So when we started talking about a CBD, I just want to know how much CBD is in something. And so we started you know, producing products that have a lot of isolate. So it was all isolate. So we, we took it, we isolated it in its form, and that's the only thing that we get. And so what happens with that is it's not the way that it's naturally formed in the plant with all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and everything else, and then we add to it, we want it in its natural form and function. Why? Because when it goes in that way, it does its natural function with the natural cannabinoids and its contents as is. So what we were able to find is when we did our, our testing, oil is not very absorbable. We tested all different type of brands and sorts uh, of, of products. And we also did our water soluble product, and the uptake on it is tremendous. And so what we were able to find is that when you're taking an oil form, then we say how much CBD or how much cannabinoid should you be taking? It ranges, right? And so people don't really know. And so you could be taking 25 milligrams here, 50 of one, and only getting really the absorption of maybe three, four milligrams. Or you could be taking something that's, you know, very little milligram, but getting very high uh, absorption. And uh, so that's what we looked at. We were able to find from our testing that uh, the uptake on water soluble is tremendous. It's in the body within about five, 15 minutes max. And guess what? It stays in the body for an extended period of time. So the body's able to utilize it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Does that, that help in that regards? Because we had done some of this uh, pharmaco testing and kinetics, when COVID hit, we were actually coming up with a uh, hemp product that was going to be great uh, for really just for immune support. Immune support. Mm -hmm. And so as a silver-based product along with hemp, uh, which is really good. Uh, when COVID hit, we go, man, this is going to be great. Everyone's going to run out and, and want to have immune support, right? Build up the immune system so it can function properly to fight off these virus and bacteria that were being introduced to. Um, when it came to it, uh, no one wanted to go out and buy it. They all bought toilet paper. That's my joke. No one went out and bought anything for vitamins to really build the immune support. And so we decided, hey, we know what's going on. Uh, we did stem cells for really for um, respiratory issues. Uh, we knew that uh, what was being sprayed in the environment, alcohol, all these other toxic cleaners were going to be harmful to the uh, lungs, right, in the long run. And uh, in a, well, uh, uh, it's a respiratory virus. If you're injuring your respiratory system and then introducing a, a virus, it's definitely going to get it. So we thought, man, all the stuff that's being used is going to be bad. So we decided, guess what? We're going to buy the virus. We bought the virus through the uh, independent lab that we did all the other things with. And we started 
testing this back is one of the first ones to start testing back in March of last of, of 2019. Now right. we tested all different, yeah, 2020. 2020. Yeah. Oops. Get all the years mixed together. It's fine. <laughs> this last year went a little bit yeah. crazy, but yeah. we started testing immediately and it was interesting to find that, guess what? 91% isopropanol only killed 35 to 38% of the virus uh, and had regrowth within hours. It wasn't killing it. And a lot of these things that were out there just was not doing its job. They're toxic. They're horrible. Um, interestingly enough, hand sanitizer that we're told to use all the time has never, ever been tested on COVID virus. Tell me why after we shut down the whole world. I don't know. A little odd to me. So we have done those tests. So we, we do know those answers. So we are able to come up with a product. One is a our patented CVK365 product that it contains a mineral oxide uh, along with a, a silver product. Um, and it's able to kill on contact. We've done over 100 tests on that. And it kills the virus within uh, well, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is known in body as COVID-19 on service tests. Uh, with a 98% kill rate with no regrowth within 48 hours, which can also be used as an ingestible. So th there's a little something. I'll let Zach take a little bit away with that. But that's that's the extent of what we've gone to. So super excited for immune support. Uh, and we have that uh, combined with hemp, which is great because uh, hemp helps the body do its natural function in, in the proper manner. So Right. Yeah, we've seen a lot of studies showing that hemp helps regulate the immune system. So we thought it was a natural fit and combination. So we made a, a combination product. So this has our patented, our patent pending CDK 360, uh, 365 water. So that's what Dan was talking about. That's what we tested on the 100 and plus studies. And so uh, this particular product is called Immunerol. It has our full spectrum hemp, um, the nano silver, and, and then also the, the our, our CDK water, which is the combination of the silver and the, and, and, uh, the mineral oxide and some vitamin C. So we have to um, have that's a, just what we do. Just pretty simple. Praise morning, and evening. That's right. So we we do have a approval approval from the Department of Health and Human Services uh, to conduct an IRB study on with uh, the mineral, and then from there, as an adjunct therapy for COVID. That's right. And then from there, we've also moved on to some additional studies. Um, we wanted to have something on the service, something um, organic, and we start we started to see some some promising um, things from the studies from our mineral oxide product. And so we developed this, which is our easy, safer surface. We've also conducted uh, additional studies on the COVID-19. So this is a, an EPA registered product that is completely organic, non-toxic, uh, kills 99.9% .9 of vi viruses and bacteria. And uh, on our studies on the virus, we show, it shows that we have a 99.99% kill rate within two minutes with no regrowth up to 24 hours. And, and it's, it's non-toxic. It's non-toxic. You can see actually we're diffusing it here in, in the office. It's a respiratory virus, so we want to clean out the air. So and it's very don't do this normally, okay, guys? But yeah, don't do this with your regular. Your now regular air fingers. cleaner. So the you know when we talked about uh, you know um, I have asthma. Uh, a lot of things we talked about respiratory issues uh, were very important to us. So guess what? We want to make something that was asthma friendly, so it's friendly to the lungs, friendly to the environment, and uh, was you know really biodegradable. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what our mineral oxide is and does. And so um, it, it's safe, it's effective, and um, what we know when we're doing something like this on surface, I won't say anything, but guess what we're doing in a respiratory environment when it's being sprayed. Right. So, okay. So. I have a few questions. You've said a few yeah, things. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on now we can go to questions. That's perfect. Okay, so I um, silver. Tell me what the silver does that it, is this benefit, right? I know the hemp and understand the hemp aspect, especially like the endocannabinoid system or the anti-inflammatory aspects, right? But talk to me about silver and why the combination. Yeah, that's a great question. So it's not just silver. So a lot of there's a lot of metals that have antimicrobial properties to them. Copper, silver. Silver's been well 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 known within the natural pathic um, community community for a long time. I mean, we're talking thousands of years. And so okay. uh, you probably heard familiar with the term colloidal silver. Um, you know, there there are some stigmas about colloidal silver. It got hit really hard at the beginning of COVID, uh, just because you know there's a lot of different claims on, on what it could and couldn't do. 
Um, so we actually did a lot of research on the different types of silvers. This that, isn't a colloidal silver, though. Right. I just brought that up okay. for content. It's so, not a, yeah, not we're, we're actually not using a colloidal silver. We use a, a, a different type of technology, the nano, a nano silver. And so we did test, test several different types of silver products. And it, just like the hemp and the stem cells and everything we talked about, there's, there's a different level of efficacy. The type of uh, silver that we're using has over 200 different studies, both government or in governmental, uh, medical, and et cetera, university studies. So we have a lot of research and background. Even adjustable that. study. Mm -hmm. So we know it's safe to ingest. So um, in fact, a lot of those studies are actually pu published on a lot of these medical journals. So we, we're really confident about doing the combination as far as a, a safe, effective product. And then we like the, this particular silver element. Um, it was different because uh, they, they were able to structure the, the silver molecule in a, in a different manner. Uh, so uh, essentially it's the AG404 uh, molecule. So meaning it has four different molecules, kind of like a triangle, instead of having just one molecule um, affecting the, you know, these, these, these microorganisms, you have four. And so it's a, a very, um, you know, more effective. Um, so, so long story yeah. short, I'm going to, it, what it does, it goes and attacks and steals millions of electrons, electrons from, yeah. from a virus at, at very rapidly. It, it, it's been around for a long time. You can find it in major retailers worldwide. And so this has been used a lot. The problem yeah. with uh, the silver, and th there's a lot of people that got their hands slapped with silver when they're talking about, you know, claims. And we're not making claims. So like Zach said, when we tested, we tested all different types of silvers, different PPMs, all different ranges. And there's a sweet spot that actually works with our product. But what happened was is that it took a long time for silver to actually go ahead and really break something down, you know, 45 minutes to an hour or longer. And so when it comes to a, a sanitizer, it's two minutes. When it comes to a disinfectant, it has to kill within 10 minutes with a log reduction. And so what happened is it never got to that, that breaking point. What's so important about what we did with our CVK365 is that we are able to take that and have an under, you know, a two minute kill rate as a, you know, qualifying as a sanitizer, disinfectant and a long-term kill very rapidly. So the mineral oxide can go and do its job in breaking down that outer barrier and then let the attack go ahead with the silver. So we've been able to make something that no one else has been able to do, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. So it's really the combination of those two. And it's one of those things that we, we, we came up with and stumbled into and said, hey, here's the right ratios. And it, it has to work at a certain ratio to really be the most effective. Right. And that's what made it so neat. And that's why the silver. And it has the other properties along with it for immune support as well. So that's that's why it's such a unique combination. But even more importantly on hemp, and you know a lot of the benefits on that, but uh, on the on the COVID-19 in body, right? They talk about the spike protein. Israel did a lot of research in that it doesn't really allow the spike protein to attach to the T cell very well with hemp, right? and with the cannabinoid content, helping the body do its natural function, which is what the vaccine, whatever your belief is on that, I won't go into that, but it's supposed to try and prevent from attaching. And so when you can weaken a membrane, you can weaken a cell so it can't do its function of what it wants to do, and then make it so it doesn't really want to attach and help your body do its natural function, that's the concept of using hemp in this product. Aha, that's, that's good info. Okay, so you so also said something. Yeah, this is, you know, we, we talk about COVID, right? Amazingly, I don't know what happened to the flu. I'm saying that jokingly. Um, we still have all these other things that are going on, right? And so the use of a, a, our immunorol, or we have one with, with hemp and one without hemp, they're both tremendously well. So if you have an athlete that just can't use hemp or you're in a, uh, a position in an in a, uh, employment that you can't use it, military or whatnot, we have our other product that is the same thing with the CVK365 water, just has no hemp to it. So you should be taking this all the time to keep up the immune support, not just when uh, I'm feeling like I, I have a problem. With, sure, uh, sure. Like Zach, where, do you have COVID? <laughs> That's why we look at everyone, right? <laughs> Right. Okay. So next is carrier oils. We talked about the different carriers and then uh, can you explain or talk to this or speak to this a little bit? Because I understand the difference in carrier and what I find it on the shelves, almost all have oil in them. Right. And so are all, all MTC oil or avocado oil, whatever it is.
it's coconut oil in some. Talk to me about the absorption rate because this is a huge key as to why I haven't felt comfortable promoting a lot of CBD business because I don't know how much you're absorbing or how much you're actually getting compared to what we need and for which strains and which terpenes affect which moods and there's so much, right? So, yeah. You know, one of the things that I'll let Zach talk to, sorry, I get excited, but you know, whether, uh, you know, we, we know vitamins, whether they're fat soluble, water soluble, whether they're breaking that blood vein barrier, how the body works. So the idea with a, with an oil is in order to get through, it needs to be in a lipid, needs to be in a fat. So if we can surround it in fat, we hope that absorbs better, right? The, the problem is our body really only absorbs and, and, and uh, takes in so much oil. And that's one of the problems that we have with fish oils is the absorption on that, right? Or you look at uh, a CoQ10, uh, I'm just talking about that in absorption. You have some, some real famous brands out there that go, hey, we're, we're four times uh, absorption rather than a normal product. And you'll, you'll see that. So our favorite saying is we are not what we eat, we are what we absorb. And so all, it's all an uptake. Otherwise, what goes in just goes out. And That's so, why I'm so sweet. I eat a so lot of sugar. <laughs> So that, that's what happens. So, you know, you are getting some absorption, but are you getting enough? The other thing that we don't think about is when our body, um, I, I do a lot in aesthetics and uh, I did a lot in um, it, really in, in body contouring uh, with ultrasonic laser treatments and, and things of that nature. And uh, that, that's one of my specialties and I train doctors, plastic surgeons in that. But long story short, what happens is if your body doesn't recognize it, can't utilize it, can't eliminate its stores. So people have said, oh, I, I, I popped hot for THC. You know, it's like, but I've only been taking, you know, the oil. You know, I haven't only been taking hemp oil. If your body doesn't utilize it or get rid of it and stores in fat, stores in fat, stores in fat, stores in fat, guess what? You can have accumulation. Could I go exercise and then you know, like I, I was smoking marijuana and all of a sudden I popped hot after 30 days because it's stored in the fat. Those are kind of the things that could happen because your body's just not utilizing it. When it comes into a water-soluble product, and I, I say water-soluble somewhat loosely, water-dispersible, water-acceptable, that would probably be the better term. And so your body can accept it as a water-based product and go, oh, I know what to do with this. I can absorb that, turn that on, and now it's available for the body to use it. Does it use it all? We don't know, but it gives your body the best ability to absorb it and utilize it as it moves. Okay. And when we were, when we were conducting our, our pharmacokinetic studies, uh, we actually tested several different products in, in addition to our own. And so what we, what we realized, what we discovered is um, traditional CBD products, just the traditional oils, they have the equivalent absorption rate as like Dan was saying, a, a fish oil or any type of oil. Our bodies just have a hard time processing the oil. It, in fact, it goes through a process in the gut where it's taking oil and then and put into a micelle, which is uh, essentially surrounding the oil and water, and then it's able to go through, you know, uh, go get into the, you know, in, into the rest of the body. So, um, yeah, so we we have a really good idea of how we uh, compare it with other products, and then we're also looking to expand on what we're doing as far as absorption and, and, and making sure we. We get the uh, you know CB in there in in fast manner and and, and what Zach is saying is we have an idea it does some others we we've taken the the biggest leaders uh, in in the industry and, and done tests on right. connects on the product so we know Just how we compare manner. so that's what I want to do there's so many and products you know, I want to take have tested absolutely we will we'll test them uh, yeah uh, absolutely one but one of the things that's really important about what we know about our products. And why we why we even did this is how long does it last in the body? If I'm taking a, a sleep product, do most people know when they're taking a sleep product how, how long it's going to last? Am I going to wake up groggy? Am I going to get a good sleep? Um, when should I take you know my next dose? Because we can't get into dosing. Everyone's body's different. But I can say this is available in the body for a certain period of time. So it gives us a, a lot better idea. You know, if, if we're doing a sleep type of formula. Um, you know, what to use, how fast it gets in, um, things of that nature, and how long it's in the body. So those are important elements. And uh, a lot of companies just don't do this. And I, I don't mean to be mean, but we all know this reality. You can buy CBD from every every slinger across the country. Everyone's got it. 
oh, I'm just going to start a CBD company. I'm just buying oil and re, you know, rebottling it. And here's my brand. And that's what's happening. And it just, it, it, the quality is getting less and less and less and less and less. So one of the things that's super important for everyone to know is that when we talk about cannabinoid content and milligram, we always talk about milligrams um, in, in regards to uh, an isolate, how much CBD. So, but in the isolate form, even though it's in a powder form, it's still oil powdered form. So it's not readily, readily accessible. So it has to be still be processed through the body. And most of that is never processed. And that makes it harder on the body to do its function. So you can say, I've got a thousand milligrams of stuff your body can't absorb or have a hundred milligrams of something your body can absorb it all of. Does that make sense? And that's so hard for us to understand as a consumer, but very, very, very important. I can get a thousand of something of nothing, or I can get a hundred of everything. And you're getting a lot more mm -hmm. with the other. So when we talk about ours, for example, we talk about our full plant powder extract at a certain cannabinoid content. Does that make sense? So, you know, and that's what people sense always to say. Me. Right. It makes sense they, to me. Can you explain, explain, break down a little bit? Like, what do you mean when you say full cannabinoid content? Right. And so, right. also, so, can you also touch on your lab? There's a lot of controversy that I, and I see a lot these lab results that come in that promise one thing and product is actually something completely different. And yeah. you hear a so, lot of this shopping around looking for a lab that's going to get you the best quality or the best results of what you're looking for, right? As a consumer, right. can you educate them a little bit on, you, you say your product's great, right? I also see other products that say they're great. What yeah, tell me, tell me a little bit of background on what consumers can know to really understand or check what, you know, fact checking. You know, on the fact checking for me, this is, this is speaking for, you know, uh, just yeah. me, myself, right. Um, and, and what we believe or what we, what we think and what we found is it, it's different because everyone doesn't really have a standardized everything as far as the same process for, for judging or for, uh, you know, doing the lab results. Uh, they don't use the exact same um, uh, measuring units, um, you know what I mean? And so when it gets to it, it's like we've had a problem. We it came back and said, oh, you, you don't have anything. Well, they're measuring it wrong because they're measuring it as an oil rather than a water soluble. Are they measuring it in a powder form? Or what, what area are they doing it? And so everyone doesn't have – there's not a set standard per se. There is, but there isn't. And so they have a LOQ, uh, low, it basically it just means it's, it's the lowest um, uh, measuring uh, you know, quantity to, to pass. And so um, what happens is the most important thing for you to look at is, is it free from pesticides? Is it free from uh, what they may extract it with um, in, in ethanol or any of these other things? Because uh, there's different methods for extraction, right? And so some will do it alcohol, some will do uh, ethanol some will do it by co2 extraction some will do it by all these different things and everyone's trying to get more pure extraction areas but that's one of the things that the public really doesn't know and so when you look at a, a c of a and no one should be pumping anything out without it passing all that and one of the neat things about well, utah is they've done a good job trying to make sure people have everything in and register it and know that it's at least uh, a reviewed product so it, it's hard for them. But when it comes to the amount of CBD, and this is the problem, you'll have people that will take an oil and it's like, oh, I don't meet my CBD or they'll make a water soluble. So to make the claim of CBD, they'll take a water soluble product and then they'll add isolate, which means it's no longer really, all the rest of it's a water soluble. So they can meet uh, what water soluble content maybe say is 100. And so they had 900 of the uh, other product to say we have 100, uh, 1,000 milligrams of CBD. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's being confusing for the folks, but most importantly, then go with a trusted brand, go with the brand that works for you, do as best of the homework that you can and see, have they done lab results? Have they tested their products somewhere else to make sure that they're efficacious? That'd be my biggest thing for people to look at. 
And like we, uh, there's only a couple that I know of that have really done this. And that's really what's important. I think you said a couple of really key things too, is knowing what to look for. A lot of C of A's don't have pesticides or metals, right? And so being able, I mean, and when you said, where are the standards? There are standards because in science, there are. Oh, especially right? in the pesticide. Yeah, especially in that side. The, the, those yeah. are, yeah. But there are not specific standards within the industry that regulate those labs yet or what has to be on that COA versus not. And so understanding that, you know, the plant pulls everything out of the soil and what is in the soil that could potentially be harmful and that those are, there are tests for those. And so making sure you watch for it. Also, I think, you know, like you said, going with products even, you trust. Can I, go into one thing? can I go into one thing with that as well? Is yeah. even... And this is what drives me crazy, is where is that hemp being grown? Just because it doesn't show up in a C of A, you know, on the end, uh, on the lowest limit, uh, as far as it passing. Well, if you're going and throwing it in a bad bad field or a field that's never been tested or microbe tested for soils, and then all of a sudden you go and you take it out, doesn't make it okay of a product, right? Yeah. It's still, a, to me, a tainted product. <laughs> so... Uh, just because they do that. So it's important to know that the company that you're buying from uh, is really a, a part of that whole where you talked about seed and we can, we kind of said seed to shelf, but really knowing where that's coming from, not just going, I'm going to buy any oil on the market and throw it in a bottle and, and call it my CBD. Right. Right. So, and, yeah. So tell me a little bit about, um, well, Utah. Right. Being in Utah and some of the laws and regulations and some of these ups and downs or changes, um, where has it really benefited you and proposed struggle in the business? Well, for the beginning, it actually helped us out a lot. Um, we uh, before the they passed the SB 130, this is, you know, a few years ago, um, the only way to sell a CBD product was through an IRB study. And uh, with our connections with the medical industry, we we're able to tap into the, find some clinics that were willing to work with us. And so uh, it's been very helpful to, to um, you know, start in that industry. And right when we did that, they opened everything up. So we didn't have necessarily have to do our studies. And so we went through a lot of work to try and do that. Yeah. But, but it was helpful. You know, and one thing that Utah was really, believe it or not, a little bit more on the forefront uh, as far as creating a... Um, a regulatory body to make sure that what was going out in the market at least uh, met some standard, That's right? right. Yeah. And it was it was hard because there was a lot to, to go and do. And so, but uh, it, was, it was a little bit difficult at the onset because they had to create something. But uh, there's a lot of states that don't have anything that regulates. So you don't have any idea, at least in Utah, you have a, a good idea that at least is GNP, good manufacturing practices put together. Um, and that it does meet certain standards. And so that's one of the better things about Utah and what they've done. Um, and so that, that's been a help in that regards. Um, and, and they do, they do a good job. Um, and, and I think um, there, there's things that they're moving forward with a little bit faster pace than some others. Um, I don't know why some other states haven't jumped on board with this and, and done some of these things. But um, yeah, whenever you have, uh, you know, government and you can't move as fast as you want. Uh, but for someone like us that we do it in the right manner, that that can be a, a little sometimes like, mm, we just want to go faster. But for others that are just trying to throw up a, a garbage product and try and pass it by consumers, um, it's nice to have them. Not only do they do that, but they also uh, regulate the label. So they're careful that people aren't saying things that they shouldn't say on that label to confuse consumers. And that's a great thing that the state's doing. Yeah. What's something that, that you think that they need consumers to hear or that they need support from people like you that have a, you know, all the lab tests and all of the, the background and you understand where it's coming from and clean product and certifications and you know, where do they need the support from organizations and good companies, especially for this change and this impact that uh, the companies that are not doing things right have on our industry, right? I mean, there's a 
horrible impact to any any community, but specifically um, a community that is sensitive to any of these drugs. Um, you know, it's a really good question. I, I think uh, one thing that I, I have noticed about Utah, that there's a really good community within the hemp industry. I think um, there's a lot of companies that do a lot of collaboration together. And so I think there's a, I, th I think there's a, a really good community just within the, the manufacturers. And I, I think not only do you have the standard set by the state, but I also feel like, um, you know, we know a few, a few companies that I think have, have, have done it the right way as well. And so I, I think, uh, you know, not only is there a standard within the, in the state regulations and that kind of stuff and education, I, I feel like uh, the, the hemp community in general is, is doing a nice job. I mean, there's organizations like yours where, you know, a lot of us will get together and, and talk. And so I'm really impressed of, of what, um, you know, what the conversation and dialogue has been like. And, you know, there and we're, this is still relatively new. We've been in this for, you know, just a couple of years now. It's a couple. Like, yeah. It's been a lot longer than that. Well, it, it seems like a couple. It feels like a couple. It's been about it, six. It, before, before anything was done. It, 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 well, the FP-130 passed, what, 2018, 19? Yeah, but we were working on it. Yeah, we were working for that, but really to be able to get out to the public and have a conversation and be able to educate, it, it, it's still relatively, still relatively new. So, um, yeah, I just feel like organically and, you know, you have There's, some... There are, you know, they've done really good. And like, like Zach said, the organizations, a lot of people have really upped their game because they've been forced to, right? And so where everyone else is doing this, they, they can't just skirt by and just saying, I have an oil, right? And so uh, a lot of these other things, everyone is, is doing something. Now I want a sleep formula. So what am I going to do for my sleep formula? I'm just going to throw a little melatonin in with it. And now I'm going to call it something, right? Or I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to throw anything with it. And so... That that's maybe one of my things right now. What makes it efficacious, uh, rather than just taking some CBD oil and, and throwing something in with it? That might be something to look at here in a little bit. Um, now, or the other thing too is um, there's a big difference between uh, having a dislocate gummy, um, where you just throw a bunch of stuff in that your body can't absorb, or taking a gummy and just spraying it on the outside. Is it infused? How is it infused? I think there's some manners to go a little further with that as we keep going. Edibles, uh, you know, and this is even not only a CBD market, but as we talk about really all cannabinoids, right? And there's other cannabinoids. Right? Zach will be talking to you about D8. We, we make a, a water-soluble D8. Uh, the first mint that's out there, we make a gummy. We, we know how that's absorbed. What, what is it going to really be used for? What, what's really beneficial about the different cannabinoids? And maybe a little bit of the freedom to be able to talk about, because right now we can't talk about really how those cannabinoids help the body. We have to be very careful of what we do. Otherwise we get hand slapped, fined, and even some people jailed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're not really treating the body. We're, we're helping with symptoms that the body actually encounters. And so even with vitamins, we, we can't do that. And it, it, if we can get, and that's why we kind of went to doctors first, because doctors could talk about, you know, how it works with the body and, and do something that's different than someone that's just trying to sell CBD. Right. And so maybe in that education process, um, that'd be helpful if, if some of those things could, you know, now that we have so much information on hemp, we have so much information on these cannabinoids, um, on vitamins and the powers of those, but we really can't talk about them like we'd like to. Um, and part of that is also on dosing. What, what's my difference between the uptake of water soluble? If you can show that you have a water soluble product that uptakes to this amount, which should be a, an equivalency of some sort. Does that make sense? Because everyone goes, I just want the most. So more is always better is what we always think, right? So if I have a, a 5,000 know, milligram jar and I've got one that's 500, but one outperforms the other, I'm just going to go to five. 5,000 one because it must be better. And so if there's a way that, that we can communicate that to the general public so the general public knows what the differences are. But fortunately right now, the public knows how much the cannabinoids help the body and assist it in its natural function. And that's one of the most important things that's out there. Now we can kind of fine tune that, that message. Guys, I've got a horrible 
lawnmower or something out my window. So if you can hear it, that's why I put myself on mute for a minute. Because <laughs> I was like, how do I escape this right now? Um, why is Delta 8? I mean, Delta 8 is the craze, right? I just got back from NoCo Hemp Expo and it's the craze. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, understanding, I guess, what is it? Can you educate our public? I understand that it's a derivative of hemp and that it's a, yeah, it's broken down. A precursor to Delta 9. Precursor to Delta 9, yeah. And so it's just uh, another, um, another form of cannabinoid in there. There's others as well, right? We have our CBG we're more familiar with. We have our CBN. We have all of these things. And because it's such a wonderful plant and those cannabinoids are there and they're very plentiful in those plants more than others because those cannabinoids can be found in other, other plants, right? It just so happens that we have a lot in, in, that we can actually get out of. Hops has a lot of uh, cannabinoid content. So it just so happens that we can draw more out of it and it's, it's kind of legal to take it and, and utilize it in there. And so everyone's looking at, God, what's the next best thing to not be a dispensary, but to give the body maybe what it needs. And this just so happens that, and I'm sorry, but it's the truth. We can kind of narrowly walk a line and get to the consumer what they're looking for or wanting in, a, in another form of cannabinoid that's legal. And um, that, that's what happens. And so that, that's why D8 uh, is, is very helpful. Uh, there's some great things about D8. There's some things that are not as great about D8. Um, there's a lot of people um, in poison control that uh, they're actually getting sick um, from taking too many gummies, um, too high a milligram content with all the distillate um, because they're, they're getting too much and, and they're not, you know, and anytime you're taking an edible, you know, it takes, you know, 40 to you know 60 minutes to 90 minutes to actually feel the effect and when you take too oh this is nothing and you take too much and then all of a sudden you're like i feel like garbage um and so micro dosing <laughs> is always the most important a little bit here a little bit there that's why we came up with our uh water soluble technology in our gummies we have a shot that we're doing now and actually uh, a cool dissolving tablet which has a uh, a fresh cool mint blast um, if anybody's tried D8, um, it tastes absolutely awful. It tastes like kerosene, diesel fuel. It, it's absolutely horrid. Um, and, and people will know that if you've tried it. But this actually tastes like a really nice cool mint. It's like, wow. Um, and so in making it into water-soluble technology, we don't have the, the problems that you have in some of those others. But most importantly, you can have a good effect from a little. So rather than having to do that, I, I, I just kind of tease. It's like if you don't have enough, you can just bump that just a little bit to be where you need to be on that on that delta nine, or excuse yeah, me, on the delta eight. So I've so, had a lot of people because I'm really curious about the. Um, I feel like the cannabis, the high THC cannabinoids now are almost too much for a lot of people that are trying to get into the industry. I feel like Delta 8 is an opportunity where we can bring people some, like you said, some relief without knocking them on their butts. And it's, yeah, I mean, exactly. I personally those levels on Delta Delta 9 in, in is crazy. I mean, you're up in 30 30 percent or yeah. higher. I mean, and, and so people wonder why it's crazy. Well, yeah. crazy. Yes. We didn't and have so, concentrates as kids, and now no. our kids are being exposed to. 98% THC. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely it's... crazy. And so, yeah, there, you know, some forms, it's, it's always with everything. A little bit can be good. Too much can be really bad. And that's where, you know, or, or can have the, the negative effects that we really don't want. And you're absolutely right. As a, uh, as to help the body, like you're talking about, without having to go to that uh, Delta 9 uh, THC experience, you can actually, just like what you said, it, it, it's a sativa, but yet a, a mild, but it's actually a, quite a, a mellowing at the same time. So it, it does a tremendous job when used right, and it is kind of the craze right now. And um, some people are having different effects with it just because it's not, they're not putting it really out in the water soluble. So watch out world, uh, water soluble to come on the, the, that, uh, on the D8. Well, and I think, 
science, the more that we see research and the more that we have studies like what you guys have done, the more that we're going to see you know, in pharmaceuticals, there's a reason you only need a little tiny bit of these very powerful drugs, right? And so right. And naturally, this is where we're going to see the industry go as we have opportunity. And the more we can get this into the hands of our physicians and our children, they will change the world with it. Right, they're, they're eager to find new new ways to, to create new opportunity. Um, can you tell me a little bit about where are you guys headed, and where do you what do you need to really get to this next level? Where do you guys see yourself in the next five, ten years as business? <clears throat> yeah, I, right now the market is is looking for uh, have, you know the the effect the effectiveness of products, and so we're we're continuing down that route. Uh, we see that the market is going to be uh, targeted more to to focus, um, you know, more targeted products, not just the CBD and milligram shades, but uh, a sleep, sleep products and a little more products. nutraceutical. Yeah. more more nutraceutical. The the combination of things, right? And so we have a uh, really a, a mind and body a brain balance type of product called Focus Easy. And so where everyone is doing a lot of uh, Adderall and things of that nature, we're speed, you, you know, we're using things to speed up the body. There's other natural uh, ways to be able to assist the body to do its function. And one of those is in that product. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we started up this company uh, from a previous company is because we could do nutraceutical blending. So we have one for energy and focus. Uh, we have something for diet. Uh, why? Because <clears throat> CBD receptors are actually in our mitochondrial function. And so when you get inflammation down, we're going to actually get the body to burn in its in its right state um, and, and that communication with CBD and the right other products, the CBGs for pain, the CBN a little bit more for sleep, the combinations of those along with other things, CBD itself just really is an adaptogen. Uh, is an adaptogen. Yeah. It helps other things communicate. It helps open up those pathways. So what are we delivering in those pathways when we open them up? That's really what we need to think about. And, and when I say that, we're, we're not talking drugs. We're talking about assisting the body's natural function. So giving the body what it needs uh, at that state. So we're, we're doing a lot of different combinations of things. Uh, we're creating another line that's going to be there uh, a little bit more focused on, um, uh, how do I put it, uh, a higher supplemental side. Yeah. You know what I mean? To really, to really help with um, certain um, functions, Sy systems and functions to help yeah. you function at a higher level. Yeah, I guess. I think focus. I, I I'm super intrigued by the focus. Zach actually brought samples to me yesterday, so okay. shout out yeah, Thank you so so much. But um, I'm not a big pill taker, and this is where I get. You know, I really want to find myself supplements or something, and especially the focus, not only because I am a space and I run around like a chicken with my head cut off, but I also, I like when I can sit down and give better attention. Everything about, yeah, that. So thank God I haven't found drugs. I mean, I'll be honest, that I'm probably lucky there. Um, yeah, so I don't remember where I was going with it, and I'm really excited really to try. Out. Go ahead. No, no. So we have our sleep formula. We have our recovery. We have, you know, um, you know, we're going into a, a lot, lot of those other things. We can talk about uh, the immune and everything else. So, no, so yeah, our immune support. But we're uh, a neuro, really into the neuro refresh, mm -hmm. uh, is one of our product that we're coming out with, uh, which is a yes. Yeah. In, in the neurosciences, uh, in brain fog, in these things that that people are experiencing that can help the body do again and assist its natural function. So when we can combine these different cannabinoids, and we just talk about CBD, but all these wonderful cannabinoids, and as we discover more, really put them in their right combinations to, you know, and most of that, when I say combinations, it's in their natural form that they're actually in. So we don't ever try and isolate a product out. We keep it in its natural form and function so it does everything properly. So I, I, I'm hey, a big I believer. What's that? Um, I want to bring it Utah one more time because I've got to give a shout out. I'm yes. often told that I'm crazy for trying to run a hemp or cannabis business in Utah. However, a lot of the feedback that I get when I'm out traveling is that Utah is set up to be the ideal place for manufacturing where 
heavy in the manufacturing oh, space. Yeah. We're big on the nutraceuticals. We're incredibly intelligent. We've got you know, highly educated, I guess, and we've got major freeways and interstates that run right through. Can you kind of talk about like what does future look like and knowing where the market is on the CBD and how much research you've done? And what does it look like for opportunity here as this is where we live? Yeah, this is, we we love being here. I mean, um, you know, we, Utah also is known for the MLM world. Uh, you know, we, we try to stay out of that. But well, yeah, yeah. but to a certain extent, I, I'll give a little shout out to them. They've done a tremendous amount of research. That's right. Right. And, and they've done a, and a tremendous amount of uh, being able to reach out and educate individuals mm -hmm. where, where we can. And they've really pushed some things to a higher level as far as education and, and, and reach. And because the, there's a lot of things that have done and some things are grandfathered in in Utah, allows us to do a lot of things in Utah when you're talking about manufacturing and, and doing these things that other states can't. So we have a, a true advantage. The other thing with a lot of these companies, being able to have the bottling capacities and, and the supplies and the supply chain, they are a tremendous help. It's so whether you're yeah. you're a, a multi-level marketing individual or not, uh, you know what I mean? They do a tremendous job and, and, and that's there. And so we benefit and everybody that jumps into manufacturing here in Utah, you know, just like a lot own, you know, things to Charlotte's Web and starting out and all those people that, that got in trouble along the path to get us to where we could even bring hemp and, and bring things uh, into manufacturing. Thank you to them all. Um, it, it's a big, it, it, it's a big community and everyone's been doing that lifting. And so what does that do for Utah? Huge opportunities. Um, not only to grow and get those companies products that they need because they can get them out into the market, but just because, you know, like you said, we have infrastructure that others don't have. We have good labor. We have very good education here and people that are educated and believe in the product that are willing to push. Now the farming and, you know, we, we talked about this with the hemp tree. We talked about this with, you know, textiles. There's so much out there that, that can be done. We've only scratched the surface when we talked about CBD oil. Well, and there's some that say CBD hijacked the hemp industry. You know, <laughs> CBD is one molecule of this one plant. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> it is one piece. And so... Yeah. Is actually on hemp paper, so it's still around. That's awesome. So I, yeah, I'm with you. I just think Utah is centric and we have such opportunity to bring major manufacturing of this crop and and product and to the health and wellness side, but also everything else, right? And I really do. I look at our nutraceuticals and our MLMs and how many are being manufactured here and how many, I mean, look at our distribution power by being able to it's get good amazing. product out. It's so incredible. That's, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, well, think, I, I think on the health side for a supplement side, it was just the easiest way to go in and hijack hemp, right? To get it out to the masses as, as mass acceptance. And so it, it was an easy route, but I think that, like you said, with all these others that are talking, and you know, one thing that's nice about Utah and, and your organizations is that people are open enough to discuss it. And you're not just feeling like, oh, I, I can't tell you that because you know I, I don't want to give away some trade secret. They're really out to build everybody along the pathway. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about Utah. Yeah, especially with us, we're, we're coming up with ideas all the time and, and innovating with new products and formulation. It, it, we're a phone call away from talking to some of the top formulators or manufacturers or, or if we're looking for, for a specific type of packaging or, or, or anything like that. It's amazing how fast we can adapt and, and, and get going. I mean, we, we formulated the products and, and by the next week we have them ready to go. And so, and th that's exciting. I think, uh, and it's not just the CBD. If I think you have a dream of something out there and you want something, you know, kind of formulated, it's because of our background, right? And our relationships. So all these other things that we've done in the integrated medical space, uh, we have PG research, we have all these things. And so when it comes to it, it's like, this is what we do. It's not just something, hey, let's just throw this together. So we have resources and teaming up with some of those uh, big companies and they go, hey, guys, do that? Yeah, we can do it. And so, yeah, we're, we're pretty nimble on that, but it also lets others uh, be nimble as well that uh, are doing other, other products. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how do they, how do they reach out? 
how, how are they, how should they connect? And what's your website? I'm going with my hand. Reach out. Whichever yeah. side, whichever way. Right. Right. So we have our, 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 our I guess our, our flagship website that kind of encompasses everything that we're doing called it's uh, agelessgloballab.com. So agelessgloballab.com. And then uh, Ageless Labs is our, our hemp facing website. So Ageless Labs with an S on the end of the labs. And so that's probably the best way uh, to, to reach out to us. All of our contact, our, our office phone number. We'd love, you know, we'd love to continue the discussion with everybody out there in, in, in the community. So, really. And you can always get a hold of us. One of the neat things about us is that, uh, you know, if you need us, you can reach us. Uh, we're, we're there to help. Um, even if you just need some advice or you want a product made or you just want to utilize our product or have a question on using the product, you know, we're, we're there to help. And uh, the more that we can educate, the more that we lift everybody uh, as, as far as in, in, in education. That's the way I look at it. And, you know, our real goal, you know, we make great stuff. We're not the best at our marketing. That, that's not what we do. We, we make an efficacious product and, and we're, we're proud of our products. But really to get it out and help people, that's what we're all about. It's all about giving better people better quality of life, giving the educational experience so they can go, hey, you know, um, I may not take CBD, but you're taking that CBD over there. Did you know this and this and this? And educating others, right? Yeah. It, it, that, it's all about that because uh, we all live better when we are, are better informed and educated. Okay, so one, we have just a couple more minutes and I see more products on your table. Can you tell me a little bit more about what else you guys have? We went over like the COVID spray and the mouth spray, but what else do you have? You've got your gummies. What else is on there? Your rub, yeah. your lotion. Your, focus. Our focus easy, right? Which is what you're talking about, which is uh, yeah. for brain support and body support energy. It will give you energy without giving you that, that crazy, you know, Crash, well, yeah. I'll let you explain that when you, you, you experience that, but you're not going to have this crazy crash at the end. And it's, it's a, um, it's like pure energy. You're not, it's not too much. It's just the right amount. We call it the lim limitless pill. You, you've seen that, that movie limitless. We call this our limitless pill. Your, your brain starts working great. So, and then we've also okay. developed the very first water soluble. And again, we use that term water, water soluble pretty loosely, but water soluble uh, gummy. And we love this thing. This is, this has just been a staple. My kids use it actually right before their dance competitions. And so it's kind of been their. Uh, our, our kids their, use everything their, their, we make. Yeah, just so you know. That's yeah. right. So it's good enough for them to use. But uh, we've also done the, the pharmacokinetic studies on the gummy, and you'd be shocked at the, the absorption rates that we're able to get through a. Through uh, an ingestible. Through ingestible. You'll, you'll have it. It'll be it'll be in the bloodstream within 15 minutes. Okay. This is actually our diet hack, which is uh, again why is CBD important as we're starting to diet any diet, right? Whether or not. You're, uh, you know, a paleo diet or you're on uh, intermittent fasting or you're on any of these that are out there, right, that are popular. What happens is we start to actually uh, lose muscle mass because we don't have enough potassium, magnesium. Those things start to go in the body and then we also get water weight, water gain. This is all designed to actually eliminate that, support the body, bring down the inflammation and help with insulin resistance. Some of these uh, diets that we're taking or that they're doing absolutely wreck and i don't want to be mean there's different types ketos all those but they can actually make you uh, your insulin sensitivity can just make it shock cbd is helpful to make that so we're not having that problem with the insulin resistance so that's what this product is for that's what it's designed for as we talk about nutraceuticals all those are kind of bring into that one of our other biggest one is our pain cream um it is the absolute uh, i hands down the best pain cream that there's out there. Um, and uh, that's just not me saying that. That's coming from thousands of people that are using it and utilize it. Um, but uh, it, it's a hemp cannabinoid product, and it does a tremendous job for pain. So it absorbs into the skin. You'll feel the effects of it almost immediately. And so um, all the products that we've done have been tested. They're efficacious. Uh, we have our gummies. I know. Did Zach get you the gummies? You have the yeah, other she, little pack. She had the little, yeah, small pack of the gummies. So um, this, this is just our, our larger bigger, pack. Larger pack. And then we also have our D8. Uh, so our D8 mint. Uh, we have our D8 shots, um, and then our D8 gummies. And so you'll be seeing those uh, out. We're doing the packaging right now, and those, and you'll see those out uh, very, very shortly. 
And I don't know if we're going very, to very our. Cool. Well, uh, I'm really we'll, excited. We'll, we'll send stuff to you on our, our new edge line that, that's coming up here shortly as well. So that's on the neural, well, neural let's, side. Let's get together and do an event in Utah. I've met a I'd lot of people. And so let's, you know, now that things do, are opening up. I'd love to do a taste testing if they'd ever let us. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So people could know because it's so hard to go. I don't want to spend money if I if, if I'm going to get this, this is awful. If it doesn't work, if it, you know that that's one of the things I'd love to do. So if there's any way you can find that, that'd be kind of fun to do. Yeah, <laughs> we could do an expo. I wonder if it, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some research and check into this, but I would love to do an event. I'd love to get people together, reconnect again, get our industry moving again. Definitely. Well, we can get there and we can yep. be safe. That much I can tell you. So we can do that. And uh, anybody that comes in. Yeah. We're just yeah. Going. Okay. Well, perfect. If you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm excited to have you guys on. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, Everybody so else that's listening. And I will reach out. I want to talk to you more about that other stuff we are talking about as far as, you know, past these supplements. So. Well, and I want to talk to you about your other jobs, your other life, like your body. <laughs> Team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mentioned that and I listened. <laughs> we'll be having um, some topicals as well for skincare. Okay. Uh, there's some really neat advancements uh, on that, which is one of my, my specialties. So uh, there, there's other lines. And so there's there's things to come in that in that regards as well. But uh, we'll talk more. Cool. Well, thank you very much, you guys. Enjoy your thank day. You so I'll be sending you thank this you. over. Absolutely. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. Yeah, bye bye.